What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. As ever with a new Pokémon region, there are some designs that people love. There are some Pokémon that find themselves being staples for their abundant utility, and then there are some that are just plain weird. But that also means that there will be Pokémon that some fans just don't like. And it can be for any number of reasons, but today I wanted to go over mine. Now before being called a hater or whatever, I would like to direct you to my entire series of other videos detailing every Pokemon region with some of the worst entries they have and my distaste for them. So this is by no means exclusively a Gen 9 thing. Also, I will admit that I can be a little mean on these, but these are the Pokemon that really deserve it. So here are the top six Pokemon from the Paldea region I have a problem with. Number six, the Quaxley line. Sometimes I hate being right. As soon as the starters were introduced, I had a knee-jerk reaction to Quaxley saying, oh, well, that's clearly the worst one. Maybe you don't think so, but as a simple metric of design, this duck is clearly leaning more toward the modern creative philosophies of Pokémon, whereas the other two could have been found amongst the roster of generations past. And as much as people may have defended the initial waterfowl, it got harder when the evolutions got even more outlandish, going from being obsessed with its hair to a dancer in a show? Did I miss some character development somewhere? It once again gives off the vibes of a distinct individual rather than an entire species of creatures that could believably be found in the wild. That's not a deal breaker for everyone, but for me it makes it really hard to get invested in that kind of Pokémon. Plus, I don't really see how Quaquaval is a duck at all. I mean, it looks more like a peacock. And if it's supposed to be a peacock, then what exactly makes it a water type? Was it all that dancing on dry land, or the heavy emphasis on its legs that makes it a fighting type? It all just seems so disjointed and like it doesn't really belong with the other starters, and really only fits in the region in theory, not so much in the way they actually developed it. I don't hate the Quaxley family near as much as I do, say, Drizzile or Greninja, and it may sound arbitrary, but they just kind of feel like they're more akin to knockoff or fan-made Pokémon than the real thing. And as much as that can work for a random Pokémon, for a starter it is excessively disappointing and quite off-putting to say the least. Number 5, Wugtrio. There are some Pokémon from Gen 9 that could be considered just kinda boring, like Spydops, who has really nothing special about it at all, but it's on a whole different level when the Pokémon is boring because they already made one like it before. They went out of their way to explain in great detail how Wiglet was in fact not a regional form of Diglett and actually a separate species of Pokémon altogether. And hey, I can buy that, but all that hype got me really excited as to what other crazy directions they could take this thing. Maybe be a massive eel or a new dragon of some kind, but uh, no. Let's just lazily slap on another Pokémon that's kind of a knockoff of a previous one again. That'll sure convince people how different it is. I truly don't understand what they were even going for with this evolution. Even if they had to make it have multiple parts or whatever, did they really need to restrict themselves to three just to evoke a Pokémon they were claiming to distance themselves from? And why are they coming out of a rock? Ironically, this is like the problem of what's under Diglett all over again, but instead it's above ground and leaves us with even more questions, like how does that rock move? Is it actually a part of their body? Are they all connected in there? I know this is way too much thought being put into a Pokémon that they clearly didn't care to think about themselves, since they took the obvious route and wasted roughly all the potential here, but I think it's important to call out these missteps. They might have gotten away with this about six generations ago, but when such a lethargic effort rears its head in the year of our Lord 2022, we shouldn't give it such a free pass, especially for deliberately squandering all of Wiglet's possibilities. Number 4, Squawkabilly. I don't know the number of bird Pokémon in the series off the top of my head, but it's gotta be well into the triple digits by now. So ideally, when creating a new one, you would want to give it some unique attributes, but they totally abandoned anything that could be considered important about the new Squawkabilly and just called it a day. Anything that could possibly be considered unique about Squawkabilly has already been done elsewhere by another bird. Being obsessed with its hair? We just went over that with the starter of this generation. A parrot-like Pokémon based on singing? Yeah, we did that decades ago with Chatot and Sinnoh. A bird that changes its color based on where you can catch it? They did that way better with Oricorio since it was scientifically based and they actually changed their types while Squawkabilly is purely skin deep. I can only imagine this Pokémon exists entirely because of the pun in its name and nothing else. 
There is no reason for this thing to be taking up space here, especially when other one-off birds in the Paldea region at least seem to have some idea behind them, even if that idea was just, what if a flamingo Pokémon? While the King of Squawk here just takes a pool of recycled traits and does them worse. It's like they say, I'm not mad at Squawkabilly, I'm just disappointed. Like we pointed out in the last entry, if you're going to go through the effort of creating an entire new Pokémon, be sure there's an actual ID behind it instead of just pumping out your best attempt at a Yokai Watch version of an existing Pokémon. Number 3. Mastiff. Listen, I am more of a cat person, but that's not the main reason that I dislike Mastiff. It certainly doesn't help that they were able to make two more fulfilling dogs within the same region, but Mastiff would be bland no matter what. There have been plenty of Pokémon complaints before amounting to, it's just a regular insert animal here. But it does seem outrageous here because Mastiff is just a dog. Just a plain, boring dog. The only thing of note about it is the crick in its neck and its unsettlingly woeful expression. Because what better way is there to make friends than looking like you're miserable? Now, I know there are plenty of people who will point to the Mabostiff side quest in Scarlet and Violet and say, that makes it a good Pokémon. But I say it just makes it incredibly lucky that they had a good publicist. Otherwise, nobody would care about its evolved form either. It's not even like bearded dogs or something new in Pokémon. So Mabostiff is incredibly fortunate to be given such a fan-favorite role. But Mastiff has nothing of the sort. Just being a random dog that you'll skip over on the way to catch Pokémon you actually want. At the very least, they should have made them anything besides pure dark, because it's not like that's anything new in Pokémon either, or that they have better variety options in this very game. So the fact that they tried to bury these dogs and gave them no help says to me that even they weren't convinced that this Pokémon was worth a shot. Number 2. Glimmit. What even is this thing? Is this really supposed to be a Pokémon? From what I gather, it's based on crystal shards that grow in caves or something, but they sure went out of their way to make it look like a flower instead of either poison or rock type. Maybe that was the point, to make you think it's a flower as a trick like Sudowoodo? But then what's the weird growth that's coming out of its back? It sure looks like a bulb to me. And if it is in fact based on inorganic crystals, then which parts are the actual conscious bits of the Pokémon? Because from all that I can guess, this Pokémon's actual body is basically just the tiny bullet with eyes in the middle. I know I've already said about things not looking like a Pokémon, but this goes well beyond that. This doesn't even look like it's alive, and not in the cool robot way either. It looks more like a ballpoint pen than a beloved friend who I can cherish in my journey. How are we supposed to connect with this creature and care about it when the most it can do for intimacy is stare blankly at us with soulless eyes? So with a look so far out of left field and the inability to be sympathetic in any way, not to mention being fairly late after you would have picked up some serious contenders in both of its types, means that this thing is one of the most easily skippable Pokémon I've seen. Maybe it's great in battle, but hey, none of us will ever know. Number 1. Pomo. Never before have I realistically said that a Pokémon shouldn't exist. I even struggle to justify saying that about embarrassments like Jinx. But truly, I think it is safe to say that Pomo is a Pokémon that should not exist. I'm not saying that Pommy is bad, we do need our Pikachu clones after all, and I'm not even saying that the final form of Pomot shouldn't be there either, because having a Pika clone actually evolve for the first time since the Pikachu line itself would honestly be justification enough for it to stand out, even if they stayed pure electric the whole time. But they didn't even do that. Still opting for the newer tradition of combining electric with some other random type, making the Pommy line doubly unique, because it also checked off a type pairing that we had been waiting to see. So with everything going in its favor, what possibly made them think that Pomo was in any way a benefit to these mice? Pomo is just nothing. It's just, what if a Pommy stood up? There is barely a thing that has changed between these two supposedly separate Pokémon. It's just a Pommy that got too stretched out. Seriously, even form changes out there are more drastic than these two. I just see no reason that Pomo should be here blocking our path to Pomot. Because honestly, if Pommy had just shot straight to the end as a two-stage line, I wouldn't even care. Nobody would. There's enough different between those two to warrant a shift, but Pomo is too similar to both and therefore lacks any original identity. Even its name is too similar to both, somehow being only one letter off from each one of them. 
You gotta plan to have those levels of uselessness. It's not even cool that it's a fighting type because it just punishes you with a dumb evolution mechanic with walking, when Pommy easily could have been a fighting type right from the start, like the rest of these Pika clones. It's like Pokemon saw those in-progress evolutions and decided to canonize them, except those are actually pretty cool, and this one is such an embarrassment, the Electric-type specialist didn't even use one. As much as we complain about certain Pokemon time and again, very rarely, if ever, would anyone actually advocate for their permanent removal. But I can say without hesitation that Pomo is a Pokemon that could legitimately be deleted from the National Dex for the rest of eternity, and nobody would miss it. For the foreseeable future, if anyone ever asks me which Pokemon I would delete from all of space and time, Pomo is going to have to be at the top of my list, because it is truly pointless. All it does is try to emulate things that the other stages have already done better and takes what should be an amazing novelty of an evolving electric rodent and turns it into a redundant, unsatisfying chore with a mismatched evolution gimmick. If you're still not getting it, let me put it this way. They knew better than to make Palafin's Zero Form a middle evolution, but that's exactly what they did with Pomo here. Officially making it the most useless Pokemon to have ever been created. And if I had my way, the roster would still only be at 1007. Well, actually, it would be far less than that, because I wouldn't have classified the Paradox Pokemon as their own numbers, but you get the idea. So, those are the top six Pokemon from the Paldea region I have a problem with. Maybe we'll cover the good Pokemon next time to balance it out. Which Gen 9 Pokemon rub you the wrong way? Is it in fact one of the Paradox creatures? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And until next time, stay grounded.